All right, fam, Sean Don back with episode two of Sean Don's Knowledge Bombs. In this week's episode, we have a little bit more controversial topic. We're talking about the weight throw. So it's that time of year that all the throwers out there are wondering why the weight throw is even a thing. So in an effort to alleviate all of your woes, I'm making this video. I bounced the idea off my buddy Colin and he had the perfect response. Uh, he said, this is like when a mom tells a group of teens, I don't care if you drink so long as no one drives. Pretty much, I know you're gonna make a bad decision by throwing the weight. So at least try to minimize the risks associated with that terrible decision. So thank you Colin for that wise analogy. So first and foremost, this is just my opinion on how to throw the weight and how to train for it. As always, it's important for you to find things that work best for you as an individual athlete. Uh, but at the same time, the things that I talk about in this video are what I see the vast majority of people doing wrong. So maybe listen up, I don't know. Also, what makes me qualified to talk about this? At least by my observation, I am one of the most average athletes to ever throw over 23 meters in the weight throw. I'm six foot tall, six foot half inch, literally just got measured last week. I got a 6'3 wingspan. Not very long. Uh, my back squat is like maybe 385. My snatch is 110 kilos. I think my best clean ever was 150. Those stats may be above average, but compared to other weight throwers throwing 23 to 24 meters, you can say, do you even lift, bro? Or you're pretty much a midget. And I'm not in agreement because it's pretty much true. But what I do like in physical stature and excellent genetics, I make up for with technical efficiency and proper training. Refer back to my hammer progression video if you guys need a reminder of where I started and where I came from. I wasn't good. I wasn't good when I first started. And before we begin, one last final point uh, to all those people out there saying, why haven't you made a video like this about the hammer yet? Well, motherfuckers, it's because it's the indoor season. This is more time relevant. Hammer is coming, but regardless, the way I conceptualize the weight throw and the hammer throw are very, very similar. So hopefully you guys can still take something away from this video. <laughs> So first and foremost, we must examine the differences between the hammer and the weight throw. Uh, the senior hammer for men is 121.5 centimeters or just about 39 inches and 16 pounds or 7.26 kilograms while the women's is 4 kilograms or 8.8 .8 pounds and 119.5 centimeters. I believe the weight is uh, 16 inches and 35 pounds for the men or 15 and a half kilos and um, 20 pounds or just about nine kilos for the women. Uh, basically the weight was designed to be the indoor version of the hammer throw. Uh, the technique for both events looks pretty similar, uh, you know, with the heel toe turns and all that jazz. Uh, and in theory, it's a great idea. Whoever decided to create the weight was like, hey, let's take this awesome event in the hammer and we'll bring it indoors so we can train it year round. Unfortunately, whoever came up with that original idea had no idea the beast that they would create. The forces experienced and the feeling of each type of throw are just so drastically different. The weight is pretty much a cheat code to wrecking your technique and your feeling for the hammer. And the weight is only really popular in America because it is part of the NCAA system. It is, uh, it's points at the conference and NCAA level. And from what I've seen, most Europeans don't ever touch the weight outside of the occasional special strength drill or finish drill or something like that. It's not a part of any international competition. There's no money in it. And uh, like I already said, it just totally with your technique and feeling for the hammer. And let's be real, I bet a majority of those Europeans could pick a weight up and kick our ass in a matter of months. No doubt about it. Long story short, if you want to maximize performance in the hammer, touch the weight as little as possible. Preferably not at all, but that's not why you're here. You want to learn to throw weight far, so let's get into it. We know the weight is shorter and heavier than the hammer. How does that affect technique? Well, the radius is shorter, so that means it challenges rhythm as if it were a light ball. It passes by you so fast that if you mess up, there's no time to fix it. And with the added weight, it challenges movements and positions as if it were a heavy ball. I think we've all experienced it before. As soon as you get off balance, the weight has its weight with you. Together, these two aspects make the weight a double-edged sword. If used properly, it can give you immediate powerful feedback regarding your technique, whereas the hammer is so far away from your body that it makes feeling the differences in good and bad technique very, very subtle. Unfortunately, 99% of people don't have the patience to throw weight properly, and they usually just end up creating a mess of bad habits, whether it's dragging, lifting, crashing, or usually all of the above. Athletes wanna throw far now meaning they'll usually do anything and everything to get the ball going and to put distance on their throw, even if it means sabotaging their technique and ultimately their long-term potential. Uh, so typically there are two types of people when it comes to throwing weight. There are the people who say, 
fuck it, bro. Let's just let's just grip and rip. And liars. Let's be real. You can try to finesse the weight all you want, but you're not Dempsey McGuigan. Nearly everyone who's thrown the weight far is gripping and ripping it. The ones who throw it farther just minimize the shittiness associated with gripping and ripping it. So yeah, let's dig deeper and hopefully I can teach you guys a thing or two about how to minimize that shittiness and put some distance on your throw. <laughs> So, foundations of weight throw technique. Number one, posture. I think the biggest thing that the weight f***s with most regarding technique is posture, no doubt about it. Over the past two years, I've been trying to formulate what I would consider my foundational technical concepts for the weight and the hammer. And as of late, posture seems to be the most important factor. And what do I mean by posture? Don't sit your f***ing hips back and let your shoulders come forward. You want to keep your hips underneath your shoulders. So why is posture important? Because in order to effectively accelerate the implement, the axis of rotation must remain constant. In the hammer and weight, imagine there is a pole running through the left shoulder, left hip, and left heel. This is the axis of rotation, seeing as you rotate around your heel. The more steady this axis is, the more efficient the throw is going to be. People often sacrifice posture, whether knowingly or not, in an effort to create length artificially. Add in the added mass of the indoor implement, and that makes it even harder to maintain proper posture, creating an inefficient throw. Now, obviously people still throw far with their hips very far back. And I'm not saying that it can't be done with this forward sort of posture, but I am saying for the average person to throw far, posture needs to be solid. Those people with a pronounced forward lean throwing 22 meters and 75 meters plus are usually freak athletes like Dylan Armstrong and Vadim Devyatovsky. That takes a lot of strength, power, and control that the average athlete just doesn't have. Long story short, posture is key. Keeping the ball flatter throughout the entire throw helps maintain posture and thus the constant axis of rotation, which will create a more efficient throw in turn. I can't tell you how many people have come up to me after a meet and said, man, you threw that pretty far, but just wait until you get some orbit on it and then you get some height on the release. To which I respond with an awkward laugh and a, yeah, I guess so. Release velocity is the key to throwing far, and the key to release velocity is an efficient throw. And the key to efficiently, from what we've learned so far, is keeping that axis of rotation constant through solid posture and a flatter orbit. So how do I keep the ball flatter, Sean? You may be asking me right now. Well, there's one big cue that'll help everyone. Don't fucking wind the weight, you idiot. Uh, winding the weight is an abomination. First and foremost, it is a huge waste of energy winding that big ass ball overhead. The amount of stability and strength needed to do so is more than the average athlete can manage. Secondly, the weight is so damn short, by the time it comes around your head, it's already out in front of you, and that makes it hard to establish a good connection early on. Essentially, you're gonna be guessing where the ball is at in the entry. The most crucial part of the throw, precisely the time you don't wanna be doing that. And lastly, the speed in the orbit, the weight will gain in a wind, will just come crashing down and make it even harder to maintain that proper posture that we're looking for. And once again, like most things I say in this video and most of my other videos, there are exceptions to this rule. Of course, there are athletes that can pull off winding the weight, but once again, the majority of athletes don't have the strength and control to pull off this sort of inefficient movement. A better alternative to winding the weight is to bump start or sling start. Simplifying the entry with these movements takes out the guesswork and the inefficiency typically seen in the start of a weight throw. But the wind helps me gain speed. Shut up! The preliminary part of a throw, the winds in the entry, are not for accelerating the ball. The turns are for accelerating the ball. Use that preliminary part of the throw to set yourself up as best as possible for that acceleration. The sling start or the bump start is the way to go. But if after all this you still decide you're gonna wind the weight, <laughs> You doubt, bitch, you doubt! You guys thought I was gonna give you some sort of excuse to totally sabotage your technique. No. Think again. Once again, referring to a consistent axis of rotation, the ball must travel left in each turn around the axis of rotation. This takes a very good amount of patience and trust with the ball. Being overly active as the ball travels left in each turn disturbs this left side axis and will cause you to shorten the orbit on that left side, causing dragging, crashing, and a host of other problems. In other words, you're gonna be more inefficient. Stay patient and get the ball out left each turn to make sure you maintain a solid left side axis. This can be a very tough concept for the athlete to master, as the athlete will kinda need to give to the ball. But if it happens in each turn, the ball gets out left in each turn, then I guarantee that ball is gonna fly far. <laughs> The 
the fourth foundational concept is largely how you accelerate the implement throughout the turns. I call it direction, some people call it pulse. Others say you need to counter back or step forward in each turn. There's many different ways to say it. Uh, this is based on the pendulum concept largely popularized by Stuart Toger and co. Grossly oversimplified, in a pendulum there is a consistent axis of rotation with an object rotating around it. To effectively accelerate this pendulum, you pull up at the lowest point of the orbit. The hammer and weight technique is a pendulum just kind of flipped on its side. If you look from an overhead view, the pendulum becomes much clearer to see. In the hammer and weight, to accelerate the implement effectively, you need to keep that left side axis steady, and there must be an impulse of energy backwards as the ball reaches zero out in front of you. This is what I call direction, that kind of consistent pulse of energy towards a sector in each turn. This is probably the hardest thing to understand and to grasp regarding all the things that I'm talking about in this video. But without a doubt, if you can feel this pulse of direction pulling you forward towards a sector in each turn, I guarantee it's gonna be a good throw. This last foundational concept is kind of a conglomeration of a few smaller concepts, but they're crucial things in maintaining the concepts that we previously talked about. Maintaining a good relationship with the implement is crucial for an efficient throw, and the following sub-concepts can help with that. This could honestly just be rephrased as don't drag the ball. The left side is the axis of the throw, while the right side should serve as the engine. Often though, the shortened length and increased weight of the indoor weight makes that hard. And you do anything and everything to accelerate it, including sabotaging this left side axis. And instead trying to use the left side to accelerate the ball or drag. The left side and the right side need to work in sync with the ball for an efficient throw. This will maintain a good relationship between the athlete and the implement, allowing the other concepts to happen more naturally. This goes along with subconcept one. You must have the patience to let the ball pass in each turn in order for both sides of the body to work in sync along with it. Rushing each turn will cause the left side to get ahead of the ball and the right side to get behind the ball. Patience in each turn will also increase time and double support. More time and double support means more time for accelerating the implement. Maintaining a good connection and relationship with the implement is much easier when your arms are long and relaxed. You will be able to feel the tension of the ball better and thus get better feedback from the leftward and directional forces the ball should be experiencing. It'll make patience and working with the ball easier as well. Tensing up the arms will mask these feelings while additionally shortening the radius of the athlete implement system, or the pendulum. I'm not a physics expert. I think the last true physics class I took was uh, back in high school. But I know that if you increase the length of the radius while maintaining speed, the ball is gonna go farther. To help relax the arms, the use of some sort of tech, whether it's tough skin or toss and sauce, is highly recommended. I honestly don't think I could throw 18 meters in the weight without it. Trust me. I'm not sure if this is even really a sub-concept, but I thought it was worth mentioning. When it comes to weight placement of your body during the throw, keep in mind the left side axis. It's going to be easier to maintain with more weight on that left side. Too much weight on the right side will make it tough to maintain and will likely cause crashing and breaking of posture, and then ultimately dragging, aka more inefficiency. And if all the previous foundational concepts that I've just spoke about occur during the throw, I'd bet a majority of your weight will be on the left side. So the rest of technique is largely arbitrary, or I just forgot to talk about it. When it comes to choosing how many turns or what type of turns you're doing, it really doesn't matter so long as you maintain those foundational concepts that I just explained. I personally don't recommend anything more than three turns. With the weight being as short as it is, three turns is plenty of time to get it up to maximum speed. The marginal increase in ball speed that you might see from a fourth turn is not worth the risk of sabotaging technique and ultimately decelerating the ball. I posted on my Instagram story and asked what you guys wanted to hear me talk about in this video about the weight throw. And I got a surprising amount of responses that sounded something along the lines of, can you teach me how to finish? And I wish I had a secret for you guys that want to know how to finish the weight properly. But honestly, if you're focused on the finish, you're probably focused on the wrong things. Instead, focus on your entry and your turns and all the foundational concepts that I just previously explained. If you can't do those things, then a good finish won't save your throw. And often, if you do those foundational things well, the finish will happen naturally. 
So I know these technical concepts are just that. They're not actual technical cues, but that's with purpose. You should find your own cues that help you accomplish these concepts. And I know all this technique stuff can be a lot to process in one sitting. Heed my warning, just focus on one of these things at a time. Master it and then move on to the next. Trying to tackle all these things at once is a recipe for disaster. Uh, so thanks for watching guys, I hope you learned something, but I put an ass load of work in this video, so please give it a share, tell your friends. I know I usually ask you guys to sub and share in each video, but please if you guys enjoyed this video, if you found value in it, then just go tell one of your friends. That's all I ask. Uh, and then maybe one day the US won't suck so much in the hammer and we'll end up dominating like we do in the shop lit. I just want to give a shout out to my boy Jordan Crayon for sharing the video. Thanks man, I appreciate it. If you guys wanna see more vlogs and more inspirational, motivational, educational videos, go check out this channel, I will link it below. If you guys wanna get a shout out in next week's video, share this video for a chance. Uh, so that's all I got. The sun is setting, my time is running out. Peace out fam, I will see you guys next week.